All right, I just want to talk about EMG or electromyography electrodes. The first type of electrodes are surface electrodes, which are typically used in kinesiology research. We can see some examples here in the arm, forearm, and the lower leg. Typically, or always, there are two surface electrodes fairly close together, usually about two to five centimeters apart, um, which is optimal. So here you see them in the uh, flexor region and down here in the lower leg region. A few things to keep in mind when we're applying surface electrodes. You need a clean site. Let me change this color here. Right, and so sometimes, yes, you must shave people. Some people even use, after they shave and clean, they even apply um, sandpaper to the area, not, not to draw blood, but just to make it a very clean surface so you have a nice amplification place. You place the electrodes on the long axis of the muscle, and I'll show you an image of uh, typical placements later on. Usually the inter-electrode distance is two centimeters. So place one and then the other and within two centimeters. Always, always have two electrodes and you will have one ground. And the ground is usually placed on a bony prominence near the uh, muscle belly so it doesn't impede movement. And typically in setups, black is the ground. All right, let's look at indwelling electrodes or fine wire electrodes. So we talked about superficial electrodes that are on the muscles that you can palpate superficially, but sometimes you want to get to a deep muscle or deep within a larger muscle, and so you would use these fine wire electrodes. This image is showing you a fine wire electrode going into the extensor, digitor extensor digitorum longus, sorry. So you can see it if you look at the gloved hand, you can see that fine needle going straight in towards the extensor digitorum longus. All right, something to keep in mind if you're using EMG as a tool, or if you're reading the literature that also uses EMG as a tool, that the location of the electrodes can really affect your signal. So here we have an example of um, electrodes placed over the middle of the muscle belly. And so this is what we would deem to be a normal EMG signal for that muscle belly. And you can see if you put it just slightly to one side or the other, you will decrease that EMG signal quite a bit. If you put it toward the myotendinous junction, you will almost flatline the signal. And even moving it proximal or distally on the muscle will affect the amplitude of that signal. So location is key. And this is just an uh, image that shows you standard locations for different muscles. And so this can give you kind of a first look at where to apply these EMG surface electrodes, rectus femoris on the vastus lateralis, vastus intermedius, and you can see different location points. Also, some papers will give you very, very detailed directions of where to place electrodes. One factor I'd like to discuss as um, before we end this session on EMG electrodes is why we have two electrodes. So you can see here's one electrode, two electrodes on the muscle belly. You have your reference or your ground. Um, and why we do that is to decrease the noise. Remember that electrodes are like amplifiers. They're picking up any electrical signal in the area. So electrical signal from your phones or your devices or the lights will all come into the electrodes and could alter the muscle signal. And, and not alter the, the muscle signal itself, but the reading of that muscle signal. So we want as clean of a signal as possible. So we do this by having two electrodes. So the muscle activity of, of this electrode comes into the the processing. This electrode has another muscle signal. This one is called muscle signal one, or this one is M2. They're slightly different, right, because they're two centimeters apart. So as the action potential spreads out along the muscle, it's going to be slightly different. Both of these electrodes will pick up noise. The noise should be the same because that's from your environment. So your EMG signal is just simple addition. 
m1 plus n, m2 plus n, if you subtract those, you get rid of the noise and you're only left with a nice muscle signal. So that is why you always want to use two surface electrodes. And finally, to end, I just want to make sure I mention that this concept of having two surface electrodes is called the common mode rejection. So what you are doing is you are rejecting or subtracting out what's common to both electrodes which is the noise. And so sometimes it's CMRR or the common mode rejection ratio.